everyone. This is uh, Jani Kiram MSV. I'm pretty excited to bring this live stream of my MI2 webinars for the first time on Facebook and YouTube. I've been doing this for almost three years now. Uh, and typically I do this with GoToWebinar, but this is the first time that I actually wanted to bring it to the masses. Uh, you don't need to register. You don't need to do anything. Um, just follow me on YouTube or Facebook and you can uh, subscribe to my uh, sessions. So I have a pretty good setup here. I'm, I'm not sure uh, how this is coming across, but I uh, spent a lot of time and uh, build the actual uh, gear that's required to stream and also the lighting, the sound and all of that. Uh, my objective is to deliver the best possible experience while providing uh, the latest and greatest from the tech industry. So this is going to be done very often. Uh, I'm actually planning to do it twice a month, uh, but let's see how this goes. This is my first time. So if you encounter issues, if there are uh, problems with AV, let me know, I'm going to fix it. And um, those of you joining from YouTube, um, thanks. And today I have switched from GoToWebinar uh, to YouTube Live. So uh, if you have joined uh, GoToWebinar, you, sh you should have seen a note there. I'm directing everyone to YouTube. Uh, and for those of you uh, on Facebook, uh, welcome to this session. And I am pretty excited. I know this is not a tech forum, but uh, most of my followers are on Facebook. And I thought that's a good forum. So let me switch to my uh, demo stream and my PowerPoint stream. So uh, here comes my There we go. All right. So let me get started. This is a very interesting session. Um, NVIDIA has built a pretty broad spectrum ranging from the public cloud to the data center to the desktops all the way to the edge. And they are investing heavily in cloud native features uh, on a variety of devices. Uh, and, and as you know, NVIDIA is a leader in AI, and now they are actually leveraging and exploiting cloud native. So um, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, so if you have any issues, do let me know. You can drop a comment. All right. All right, so today's session is about exploring cloud native features of um, NVIDIA Jetson platform. Uh, and I'm going to walk you through various features and uh, it's a demo centric uh, session. I'm going to show you a lot of, uh, lot of uh, demos that basically walk you through what it means to build cloud native applications, particularly related to AI and inference. So I'm still a bit nervous, not sure if the audio stream is fine. Uh, folks, do drop a comment if you are able to uh, listen to the audio and uh, watch the video. Uh, that would really help me get some feedback. And once uh, I, I know we are live and everything is working fine, I will uh, just dive into the session. All right, so let's get started. So what is MI2? MI2 webinars are basically focused on the convergence of machine intelligence and modern infrastructure. So machine intelligence is all about IoT, AI, machine learning, deep learning, neural networks, and everything related to artificial intelligence. Modern infrastructure is all about Kubernetes, containers, container orchestration, and uh, serverless computing, edge computing, and everything related to infrastructure. So every month, I deliver a session from one of these tracks, either from the intelligence track or from the infrastructure track. And as we see, there is a convergence of cloud native with uh, AI. And that's the focus of MI2. This is where intelligence meet in, meets infrastructure. Um, every webinar is complemented by a tutorial. Typically, that goes to the new stack. That's where I publish my content. And they're also my media partners. 
Um, and I strive to be an independent and neutral evangelist um, to explore and bring the latest technologies to you. This is not a, a platform or a forum to market or sell any of these technologies. This is completely independent, unbiased, neutral forum. So NVIDIA is not paying me to do this. So objectives. So I'm going to kick off this session with a quick overview of NVIDIA Jetson platform. Even if you're not familiar, you'll understand the basics. And then um, I'll go straight into the cloud native investments that NVIDIA is making with Jetson. And then um, I'll actually walk you through the process of installing Kubernetes and I'm going to build a hybrid cluster and I'm pretty excited about it. So hybrid cluster is basically the control plane runs on x86 and the worker node runs on a Jetson Nano, which is an ARM64, uh, actually Jetson Xavier and X, I take it back. Um, and then uh, finally, once we have the infrastructure in place, we're going to run uh, a PyTorch model on top of the Kubernetes cluster that we deploy and use this PyTorch model as a cloud native workload for inference. So I'm going to walk you through the entire spectrum, all the way from exploring the container runtime to installing Kubernetes and uh, configuring K3S to talk to the uh, GPU and the underlying container runtime, and then uh, to actually take an existing model, package it as a Docker container, and uh, spin up a couple of pods and expose it as a service, and then use it for inference. Uh, pretty interesting demo-driven session, so uh, stay with me for next 30, 30 to 35 minutes. All right, so NVIDIA Jetson family. It is a, a broad spectrum of edge computing devices, production grade edge computing devices that actually uh, range from Jetson TX1 all the way to Jetson Xavier NX. Uh, TX1 was one of the very first edge computing devices that came into the market and uh, gradually NVIDIA started investing into this and we have seen Jetson Nano. Now there are two flavors of Jetson Nano, one is 2GB, the other one is 4GB. Jetson TX2 was uh, actually one of the very powerful edge computing devices that came with a lot of uh, uh, powerful uh, CUDA cores and an ARM64 CPU and so on. And uh, uh, Jetson Xavier is almost like a successor to TX2. It uh, actually replaces this with more power and also a smaller form factor. And as you can see, the capabilities, 384 CUDA cores. Uh, what this basically means is CUDA is the compute unified device architecture. Now this is responsible for uh, performing mathematical operations and complex calculations parallelly across multiple cores of this accelerator. So it comes with 384 CUDA cores. Uh, it's actually powerful than many of the desktop GPUs that we have. Um, six core CPU, again, uh, nothing less than uh, maybe a laptop that we use. Our laptops are typically powered by an eight core CPU. This comes with a six core ARM CPU, eight GB of memory, uh, cost $399. Now this is a very powerful platform. In terms of software, Jetson has, Nvidia has built something called as Jetpack. So Jetpack is, a, is an SDK, uh, that runs on top of the Jetson family of products. So at the bottom of the stack, we have the Jetson hardware family, all the way from uh, TX2 to the most recent uh, Jetson Nano 2GB. And then uh, there is a flavor of Linux called L4T, which is basically Linux for Tegra. So Tegra is the chip that NVIDIA has built it. It is based on the ARM architecture, but it is proprietary. Uh, uh, a CPU from uh, from NVIDIA. And now that NVIDIA owns ARM, we can actually expect a lot of innovations in this space. So uh, L4T is an Ubuntu distribution, highly customized for the Jetson family. That's why it is called L4T. And Tegra is the chip. Uh, so that is the operating system layer. And then on top of the operating system, we have a variety of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, AI accelerator software, right? For example, there is TensorRT. TensorRT is a very powerful and again, a framework uh, which will optimize a PyTorch or a, or a uh, TensorFlow model for inference. So that is running on top of uh, uh, L4T. And, and uh, there are a lot of other computer vision related uh, libraries uh, and uh, various mathematical libraries to, to run uh, high performance computing workloads optimized for the edge. And then there are various SDKs and modules. Uh, some of them are uh, existing pre-trained machine learning models. Some of them are very uh, 
innovative and edge optimized SDKs, for example, DeepStream, that actually helps you build a video analytics pipeline. You can connect multiple cameras and uh, create a pipeline of inferencing. So you can actually detect if someone is wearing a mask or not, uh, if they are maintaining enough social distance, um, what is the current emotion. So you can basically take a multiple set of uh, modules and each module representing a model and, uh, and actually build a pipeline through which the video feed will go through and you can perform real-time inferencing uh, based on deep stream. So all this is the part of the Jetson software stack. Uh, again, if you're not familiar, uh, the best way to get started is to invest in the uh, Jetson Nano 2GB, which will cost about 99 USD uh, and uh, download the Jetpack SDK, uh, burn that into an SD card, plug it in, boot up your Jetson Nano, and uh, you have pretty much all the libraries that you're seeing on this slide. So that is the software stack. Now, remember this session is all about cloud native on Jetson. So when the entire world is shifting towards containers, cloud native and Kubernetes, NVIDIA is not left behind. And uh, it actually makes a lot of sense to bring AI into Kubernetes because AI is all about parallelism, massive parallelism. Uh, you, you, you have to train models based on multiple cores of AI accelerators and GPUs. So there is a lot of parallelism when it comes to AI. And Kubernetes is all about scale. And that scale is at the machine level or at the node level. Now, when you actually bring a, a set of nodes and each node is powered by GPU and it is orchestrated by Kubernetes, you have best of both worlds. On one side, you have parallelism driven at the hardware level, which is the GPU and the AI accelerator. And then uh, the infrastructure layer is actually orchestrated by Kubernetes and you have a scale out architecture. And this combination is uh, a very, very, align with uh, uh, where the industrial IoT is headed, right? So we need a lot of horsepower at the edge. We need a lot of computing power on the cloud. And the best way to cluster these GPU-driven nodes and GPU-driven devices is through Kubernetes. So what NVIDIA has done is to embrace container runtimes. Initially, it was all about Docker. So NVIDIA has built a custom runtime as a plugin to Docker, the Docker engine. And as we know, uh, the Docker engine is uh, getting deprecated. So NVIDIA has moved away from uh, just targeting Docker and has started to invest in Container D as well. And then they actually move the NVIDIA Docker project to what is called as NVIDIA Container Toolkit, the NCTK. Now, uh, the, the Container Toolkit is basically um, bringing in or bridging the gap between the GPU hardware and the container runtimes. And NVIDIA has done a phenomenal job of uh, building that, that runtime that can uh, basically latch on to a Docker daemon or a container D daemon, and it will uh, make containers access the GPU. So, uh, you know, when you access GPU from containers, you can do a lot. Uh, you can build reusable environments. You can actually scale out your uh, your pods. You can do a, a lot of stuff. So that's what is all about cloud native on Jetson. I don't need to tell the benefits of containerization and microservices. Easier and faster deployment. Uh, you can bring the best of CI CD to AI. Uh, agile and easier development. So. You know, you can you can build a lot of reusable components and layers. For example, when I wanted to build a TensorFlow uh, a project and I wanted GPU support with uh, Jupyter Notebooks thrown into it, I didn't have to install. I just did a Docker pull of one of the images that NVIDIA is maintaining. And in about two minutes, I had uh, an image that runs the latest TensorFlow for GPU and it has Jupyter embedded in it. So I just went live with my IDE in uh, in about five minutes uh, without worrying about the CUDA versions, the libraries, and so on. So that is the advantage of uh, you know bringing containerization to the edge, agility and uh, ease of development. Of course, scale, I've been talking about it, parallelism at the accelerator and scale out at the infrastructure. Uh, extremely portable. Now, for uh, a lot of container images that we build, they can work seamlessly across cloud and edge, of course. Um, if you are building it for the edge with ARM64 and L4T, then it is confined only to edge. But uh, a lot of times you can actually bring in your 
existing container images um, and with multi architecture you can you can parallelly build it for arm 64 which is targeting the edge and x86 uh, or amd64 targeting the cloud um, you can basically create a very uh, agile and very efficient ci cd pipeline that will take your uh, uh, models and actually package them for different environments a uh, lot of portability there so that's cloud native on jetson uh, NVIDIA has built its own registry, but registry is just one component. They actually call it as NGC, which is NVIDIA GPU Cloud. And uh, what it actually provides is a set of images, a set of pre-trained models, uh, various Helm charts, and uh, a collection of assets that you can actually reuse. So all of that is available under the NGC umbrella. And uh, uh, one of the core pillars of NGC is the registry. And that registry has certain uh, uh, popular images like L4T base image. Now this comes with the core Jetpack, then TensorFlow, the most recent version, PyTorch, and there is a generic container image, which is ML with Python 3.6. Uh, there's a deep stream container image and a variety of pre-trained models like emotion detection, pose detection, uh, image classification, uh, image segmentation. A lot of those models are available there. So lot um, to, to, to show you, I'm, I'm not going to spend uh, more time on the um, on the uh, slides, so I'm going to walk you through the um, the uh, demo. So let me switch to the demo. But before I go any further, I want to spend a bit of time on um, on the NGC cloud, the NVIDIA GPU cloud. So what you see here is the NVIDIA NGC. You can sign in. Uh, currently, it says welcome guest because I'm an anonymous user. But once you sign in, you can actually pull a lot of images, a uh, lot of models. So you know all these are the container images that you see here, uh, from CUDA to CUDA for ARM64, uh, you know, uh, the DeepStream SDK, Transfer Learning Toolkit, a lot of stuff uh, that's available here. Then uh, we have Helm Charts, um, which is basically the uh, mechanism to uh, deploy uh, uh, various uh, uh, containers and various applications. So, Give me a second while I fix a few things here. Uh, my UPS is beeping, which means I just lost the power, but uh, I should be I should be able to handle this. Give me a second while I fix this. Okay, um, it's not very often that it happens, but looks like uh, there is some issue. Uh, but let's see how far my UPS can pull off. So uh, this is the challenge of doing a live stream, but nevertheless, so this is NGC. Now I want to switch to my command prompt and uh, uh, SSH into my Jetson Xavier NX. So my first demo is all about exploring the container runtime within Jetson Xavier NX. So what you see here is the, uh, yeah, we are lucky the power is back and the UPS is not beeping anymore. Perfect. So so now we have the um, Jetson Xavier NX running uh, L4T, which is the uh, Linux for Tegra. And you can see it is based on Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, and this is running one of the most recent versions of uh, L4T. Uh, which is 4.5. Uh, I think I'm running 4.41. So this is uh, uh, Jetson Xavier NX. Now, if you actually look at the uh, details, and obviously it is based on Ubuntu, it is based on um, the the uh, same distribution, the same Ubuntu fork, you know, uh, that that's actually run on every other Jetson device. Uh, and if you explore the CPU info, it is based on an ARM VI processor. Um, you know, there are multiple cores. Um, 
you can even overclock that and if you look at the ram uh, it comes with 8 gb of memory which is uh, pretty good and then uh, there is docker so when you actually do a docker version you'll actually see this is running docker now it's pretty interesting uh, to see docker built right into the jetpack so this is running docker but what we are interested in is basically uh, oops i need to append sudo so so it is currently pulling uh, hello world now this is just to show you that uh, i am running a live uh, environment and this is uh, the multi architecture hello world getting pulled from docker hub and uh, docker is working now what nvidia has done with the nvidia container uh, runtime toolkit is uh, building this plugin for docker and that's called nvidia docker so if you actually see this is based on the same docker engine but it is called the nvidia docker and it has a very uh, different version and this is basically the bridge between the um, underlying gpu and the uh, uh, container runtime so nvidia docker is the foundational aspect you know whether you're running containers or whether you're running kubernetes this is the foundational aspect now you can actually add uh, something called runtime nvidia and uh, run the same hello world now there is no difference but this switch that we are providing which says docker run followed by hyphen hyphen runtime nvidia is actually the legacy way of running uh, the nvidia specific containers and this is a hint to the docker engine that we are targeting the nvidia runtime and not the default docker engine or the default uh, runtime now how do we turn this into uh, like the default version well uh, there is a trick i'm going to show you that but uh, if you actually see in the uh, etc docker demon.json there is uh, a collection of runtimes and one of the runtimes that you see here is the nvidia container runtime and this does the magic uh, you don't need to install this it comes packaged with jetpack so you don't need to really install this is still in beta earlier this used to be uh, a part of uh, the cloud instances and the uh, higher end machines but now uh, nvidia has ported this over to jetpack and it is now shipping as a part of the core jetpack stack now that is uh, the nvidia container runtime which is bridging the gap between containers and um, containers and the gpu so let's actually um, go back to the ngc now now that we have seen the container runtime so here you can actually search for a variety of containers for example tensorflow right so you'll actually see there are a lot of tensorflow images and uh, this is what is interesting to us so you know this is basically the nvidia l40 tensorflow which means we are targeting the edge runtime perfect so that is the image that i actually want to pull so hopefully that's already here so i don't need to spend a lot of time pulling the image so when we actually uh, do this uh, it's already pulled to to save the time so this image is now uh, available to us and and this is not going to run on a normal machine obviously this is optimized for uh, the nvidia uh, edge devices particularly the jetson family so now what we'll actually do is to launch this uh, container so you know let me let me get into this container and uh, now you know we did a docker run and we are right inside this container but you you see it is running as a privileged container because it needs to have access to the underlying pod uh, underlying uh, uh, gpu runtime so so now from there i actually um, start the python interpreter let's import tensorflow now this is going to take uh, a couple of minutes for the first time because it is going to access the gpu and uh, you know there we see the uh, the libcuda rt the cuda library runtime is now open which means uh, it's the first hint that tensorflow is able to access the gpu so let me print the tensorflow version we are on 2.3 not very old uh, just a couple of versions uh, from the recent release so now let's actually check this uh, this tensorflow method 
will uh, list all the available GPUs. So I'm going to run this and there we go. So it says physical device, there is one GPU. Now, this GPU is a 384 core GPU. We can do a lot. You can in fact do transfer learning on this GPU, pretty powerful. Okay, so where are we and what did we just do? Well, we did a lot. <laughs> so we first explored the container runtime in a uh, Jetson uh, Xavier NX. By the way, I'm in the studio. These devices are in my lab and I'm connected to them on a high speed network. So unfortunately, I'm not able to show you those devices, but trust me, that device is running uh, in the top floor. So uh, that is the Jetson Xavier NX. So we have explored the container runtime and we have seen how NVIDIA bridges the gap between the GPU and the container runtime. Then we pulled one of the TensorFlow images from the NGC and uh, we uh, ensured that it is able to access the GPU. Now, one of the things that I want to do is to turn this NVIDIA runtime into the default uh, uh, as, a, as a default runtime. So for that, all I need to do is open this daemon.json and uh, add an entry. And this entry will, uh, will help us you know, avoid typing this NVIDIA runtime uh, every time we are launching a specific uh, container. So this flag is an indicator to Docker that use this as the default runtime. And this is essential uh, before we install Kubernetes because if you install Kubernetes on this, particularly K3S, even if you pass the Docker flag, the kubelet doesn't know how to launch the GPU because it talks to the standard Docker runtime and that has no visibility to the GPU and your pods will fail. So to make sure that the kubelet is seamlessly accessing the GPU and it is delegating the container lifecycle to the NVIDIA runtime, we actually add this entry. This is very essential. So, uh, and of course, once we are done, we'll also uh, restart Docker just to make sure that you know, the Docker service is up and running. And uh, this is a very uh, important step. Now, if you, if you miss this, then you cannot actually install uh, Kubernetes on it. So uh, now let's check the status. This is a very crucial step. Sometimes I falter because I don't do this step and Kubernetes will, will fail. You know, the pods will always be impending. Um, great. So now everything looks good. So this is active. The uh, NVIDIA container runtime is the default and we are ready for our next demo. So what is the next demo? Obviously, uh, we have seen the foundational aspect, which is the container runtime, and we have successfully run one of the containers with GPU access. Now, obviously, the next step is to build a two-node Kubernetes cluster. Now, I don't want to burden my edge device, which is my Jetson Xavier NX, running the control plane. So what I want to do is I want to run the control plane on an x86 machine. So I have another uh, mini PC from Seed Studio, which is called the Odyssey Blue mini PC. I recently got a bunch of them. So I'm going to delegate and offload the control plane operations to the Odyssey Blue mini PC and uh, run only the worker node and the kubelet on the uh, Xavier NX. That way, I don't need to uh, overburden my edge device with uh, the, both the control plane and the um, and the work, worker node, uh, basically the kubelet. So what we're going to do now is to quickly install K3S, which is one of my favorite uh, demos. So let me uh, sign out of this, go to demo two, and uh, let me make sure I have access to my mini PC, which is Odyssey Blue. There we go, it is. So now I'm going to um, get into the Odyssey Blue. Okay, perfect. Now this is running standard Ubuntu 18.04. Uh, nothing, nothing uh, great about this. It's a mini PC. Uh, runs, uh, I think, four cores, 8 GB of RAM, 128 GB of SSD. Good enough to run a K3S control plane. So now I'm going to do a few things. So it's already there. Uh, I'm going to do an air gap installation of. K3S. Why air gap? Because I don't want to wait for the images to be downloaded and all of that. So I have gone ahead and populated uh, everything required for K3S to get started. So all I'm going to do is run a bunch of uh, commands and uh, in, a, in a minute or two, we should actually have the K3S 
uh, uh, master node, the control plane up and running. So I'm going to um, set some environment variables. If you're not familiar with uh, K3S, basically I'm overriding the node name. I don't want to see Odyssey Mini Blue or whatever as the host name. And then I'm forcing K3S to write the config file into the standard location, which is dot uh, cube config in my home directory. I'm setting the permissions to 644 and uh, you know, this is the air gap installation. I want to skip the download. Uh, and then finally, I'm assigning a token because this is the token used by Jetson to join the cluster. And then uh, I copy over this uh, binary and kick off the installation process. Pretty straightforward. And I love this simplicity of K3S. So um, let me first set the environment variables. And then you, are, you actually see everything that I need to run K3S locally. Even if I lose internet connection, this should, this should really work because it's air gap. So now I'm going to copy over the K3S binary and then kick off the install.sh script. That's it. Now, I think 32 seconds the last time I counted uh, is the time it takes for the control plane to get started. Pretty fast. Now in, in about, um, there we go, less than a minute. So now make sure K3S is up and running. Yes, it is. And then I can get the nodes. There we go. So obviously, yeah, now it is ready. Ready since 30 seconds. Perfect. So now we are running the control plane on an x86 machine. You know, this is an x86 machine running Ubuntu 18.04. And this is acting as our control plane. Now, what I'm going to do is um, get out of this. But before that, let me do one thing. I want to I want to do uh, a, an important step. So let me grab the config file from dot cube directory, and uh, this will enable me to access the cluster from my Mac. So I'm going to grab this cube config definition and okay now change this to my this is 72 all right so what i've done is basically to grab the um, to grab the config file um, and now I can actually use kubectl from my Mac. And this should really get us, uh, oh, sorry. I also need to set the, uh, the cube config. It is actually pointing to another cluster, which is not accessible at this point. So yeah. So now we should be able to access our uh, single node cluster. Perfect. So node one is up and running. Now the first step is done. You know, the control plane is up and running. Then um, what I'm going to do is SSH into my second node, which is the ARM64 Jetson Xavier NX. Right. Now I'm going to set the same environment variables, you know, override the host name, um, point the kube.config. Cube Actually, this is not required. I can, I don't need to do this. I can get rid of it. So um, skip the download. It's again an air gap installation. Same K3S token as my master and pointing it to the control plane or the master. So let me first set these environment variables and then copy the K3S binary to the exact location. And the most important step, we are forcing K3S to use the Docker runtime. And Docker runtime is in turn using the NVIDIA Docker runtime. Now this is how my Kubernetes pods will gain access to the GPU. Phenomenal mechanism, very simple, but we can actually run pods that can talk to the GPU. Very cool. So let me uh, run the final step. So now we are going to launch the, that's it. So now K3S agent is up and running. Perfect. That's all. That's all we need. Now I can get out of this machine and do a kubectl get nodes. And in just a couple of minutes, we should have a two node cluster powered by K3S and there we go. Fantastic stuff. One is running x86, the other one is running ARM64 powered by a GPU. And this is what I call as a hybrid cluster. 
Now I'm going to use Longhorn, which is the most recent uh, file system that has become a part of CNCF, to actually stretch the storage between the x86 and the ARM64, and it's, it's going to be fun. But at this point, they're all disjoint. There is no overlay storage connecting these two uh, nodes. But I'm digressing, so let me get back. Perfect, so now, Let's take it to the next level. You know, in the last demo, I have shown you running a TensorFlow container that could talk to the GPU. Now I want to take it to the next level and run a pod. So let me let me show you uh, the pod that I'm going to that I'm going to launch. So very straightforward, very simple. This is a pod, not a deployment. We don't need to really worry about it. Uh, it is just launching this image and uh, sleeping forever. That's all this pod does. Uh, so my goal is to exec into this pod and see if I can actually still access the GPU. So let me go ahead and apply this pod. And uh, let's check. Now it should be up and running in no time because I've already pulled the image in the last step. So it did not take uh, longer. So now I'm going to exec into this and straight away launch Python 3. So I'm going to drop into the Python shell. Perfect. Now let's repeat the drill. Import TensorFlow, print the version, right? It's the same container, so it's not going to be very different, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed to check if we can still access the GPU. And this is much faster. So now we are inside a pod that has a TensorFlow container, which can talk to the GPU powered by K3S. It gets better. Cool. So, so now uh, we are, we're almost done. So um, with the second demo where, you know, we built an end-to-end -end K3S cluster, launched a TensorFlow container, uh, I, I mean a pod, and uh, we could exec into it. That's the second step. First was all about container runtime. Second was all about Kubernetes. Now that we have the infrastructure in place, where is the intelligence? So the intelligence comes in terms of a PyTorch model that can identify a variety of images. And that's what I want to run on top of this Kubernetes cluster. So let me uh, switch to my third demo. So here, you see some Python code, okay? Even if you don't understand this, even if you're not an ML developer, don't worry. Uh, this is actually a PyTorch uh, model that I'm going to run on top of uh, Jetson, but packaged as a Kubernetes pod. So this is the beauty of this code, right? It says, if you find a CUDA environment, run it on the GPU, otherwise fall back to CPU. Very simple one-liner, but very powerful. And this makes my model run on both CPU and GPU. Now, this model, when I actually run it on my Mac, it runs on CPU because is available, you know, CUDA is available is going to be false. But when I move it over to my Jackson Xavier, it becomes true and it takes advantage of the GPU. So that is the important thing about uh, adding this line. Then I, use uh, one of the pre-trained models, um, which is ResNet 18. Now, instead of leaving it to PyTorch to download every time I execute the code, I am caching the model. Normally, this command can actually download, but I'm, I'm not downloading it. I am caching it. It's a part of my container image. Not a best practice, but for this demo, it's okay. Ideally, we should keep the model um, away from the pod so that we can update it independently. Uh, it should be in a RWX PVC so that we can actually update it from another pod as a part of the CICD process um, or the or the MLOps process. But in this case, I'm actually bundling it. So now um, we do some image transformation by applying this mean and standard uh, deviation to the image. Now this is a prerequisite if you want to infer images based on the ResNet 18. And then um, we build this uh, uh, transformation to basically change the image size to 224 by 224 and uh, to turn that into a tensor and move it over to CUDA. So that is what is the next step. Then we you know, basically call the transform image and then uh, this is basically Flask. So this is actually a Python Flask uh, uh, program. So when I call slash predict with a post method, I invoke 
the image pre-processing and I finally call uh, the prediction is equal to, you know, pass it over to model. So this is where the magic happens. This is where the intelligence takes place. So the image that I pass via the um, post method to this Flask program, it uh, basically goes through this step and then it comes back and prints the labels. So this is the uh, uh, Flask code and Python inference program that I have written. Now, I can actually run this locally. Um, let me see if that works. Okay, so Okay, uh, my virtual environment is not set. I don't want to waste time, but I'm going to actually use this for live inferencing on the edge device. So uh, bear with me as I uh, build this. So, so now we have this code, and you can you can also see there is a requirement.txt. All it does is install Flask. Now, based on the infer.py and requirements.txt, I build my Docker file. So this Docker file basically builds from the alpha t ml base image. Now this is available in NGC and I uh, copy my requirements.txt, um, I copy over my model and then um, run infer.py every time this is launched. So we go ahead and build this Docker container, right? And then once that is done, we um, basically build a uh, YAML file. So let me show you that YAML file. So now, um, I have walk, walked you through the steps. So basically an info.py, you know, where the code uh, resides, then we have a requirement.txt. We built a Docker file. The Docker image is already in place. I don't want to show you Docker build and tag and Docker pull push. I've done all that grunt work already. So there is no point in repeating it. Now, assuming the Docker image is available, I am creating a, a, a combination of a deployment and a service. So I'm listening on the default uh, uh, Flask port, which is 5000. And then um, basically the code is packaged into this image, PyTorch ResNet. And this PyTorch ResNet is already on Docker Hub. I've also uploaded that to NVCR, which is the NVIDIA container uh, registry. So now I'm going to deploy this. So let's uh, make sure kubeconfig is in place. Now, what I'm going to do is, let, let me make sure. Okay, so config file is not in this directory. So what I need to do is to make sure I expand the TWD. So this will uh, help me manage. Okay. So now I switch over to demo three. Okay. And now let's do a cube cuttle get nodes to make sure we are talking to the cluster. There we go. Now I'm going to simply deploy the restnet.yaml file. Okay. And let's see. So this is this is actually a pretty large image. Okay, now this is up and running. Uh, let's also check if the service is available. So of course the service is available. It is exposed on uh, uh, port 30,007 as a node port. Now, I want to really test this guy, right? So I want to send a couple of images and see what this uh, uh, code returns. So what I'm going to do now is to pass the URL of uh, a cute dog, you know, the image of a cute dog, and also uh, a flower that looks like maybe calendula or sunflower or whatever. So now I want to send these images to my inference service running as a pod on top of Jetson Xavier, exploiting CUDA, and see how it responds. So what I've done is I have actually populated um, these images in an S3 bucket because uh, and I didn't want to keep it on my local machine. So, uh, you know, it's easy for me when I run this in the cloud in at the edge. So the images are centrally stored in an S3 bucket. So all I'm going to do is pass this image 
to the inference service. So here is the command. Okay. Now 10.81 is where my Judson Xavier is listening and this is the port number and this is the predict uh, uh, flask uh, path and I am sending the doc.jpg which is available on S3. So now this is going to take a few seconds for the first time because not bad. So now this came back and told us the, that the image that we have sent is a Maltese dog and uh, pretty accurate with a probability of 88%. So now let's actually send the flower.jpg and see how this works. Wow, pretty fast. Now this is a daisy flower. It's not calendula, it's not definitely not a sunflower, but it's a daisy. Perfect. So now we have gone the full circle, right? Uh, and this is what edge is supposed to do, which is faster inferencing. And this is pretty fast. So when you actually hit, it comes back immediately. And uh, there is GPU in action behind the scenes. We don't need to do anything. Fantastic. So, you know, we have done everything. So uh, let me summarize what we have seen so far. So the first thing that we have done was to configure the NVIDIA Docker runtime as a default runtime and we restarted Docker. Then we installed a two node cluster, a hybrid cluster running x86 and ARM64. And we made sure TensorFlow pod is running. And finally, we have actually deployed an inference rest endpoint and invoked it by sending a couple of images. And the uh, model has been pretty good at predicting. It's not only fast, it's very accurate. And this is where cloud native meets the edge and the intelligence. So this is the convergence of three things, the edge infrastructure running Kubernetes and cloud native and intelligence powered by CUDA, um, the Jets, Jetpack stack um, and the PyTorch model that's running there. Perfect. So um, that brings me to the almost the end of this session. Now I'm going to switch over to my cam and um, Excellent. So I hope you like this session um, and I'm going to completely move away from go to webinar and uh, stream live on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Uh, my next session is going to be a deep dive on Azure Arc. So I'm going to walk you through Azure Arc for servers, Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes clusters and Azure Arc uh, data services, everything. It's going to be a deep dive. Uh, I'm going to announce that very soon. So. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed in preparing and delivering this session. Uh, this entire tutorial will be at Newstack, my media partner. And I want to thank Google, who is one of my premier sponsors for this webinar series. And if you have any questions, uh, drop a note on YouTube or Facebook and I'll come back to you. MI2.live is where you should go and uh, sign up for the upcoming sessions and take a look at, look at my content calendar. Um, Thank you, and I'm going to end this uh, live stream. So, um